good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever you decide to watch this commentary. I'm C.J. Ferry. I'm with Spindle City Straight Talk and South Coast Media, and this is a commentary from me. It's been a while since I've done one, so I thought it was about time that we have one. And I think the first thing I want to address today is the fact that this past week we had a 50th anniversary of the battleship Massachusetts coming to Fall River. And this was a logistical nightmare. Um, so many things fell through the crack, which seems to be a normal occurrence for um, events that are put on in Fall River, uh, whether it be by Battleship Cove, by community members of the city, um, or even the AHA group. Um, they put on two events prior to this that had absolute crazy logistical nightmares. And one of the questions that was asked over the weekend of many members of the AHA committee were, where is this going on? Where is that going on? And the answer was, check the website. Well, I don't know if you're aware of this, but when you're standing in the middle of North Park or you're standing down at Battleship Cove, you may not be able to gain access to the web, so you can go check the website. Something you should have available, either to hand out to people or be able to tell them, is where the events are so that people can attend them. This is how community support for events, which should be a great asset and a great thing for the people of Fall River and for surrounding communities, lose their support. I mean, the powerboat race is a wonderful thing. It's supposedly, you know, authorized by the powerboat association or whoever that may be. But again, we dropped the ball. We dropped the ball so far that Somerset said, you know what? Stop assuming. And so they put up parking vans all along the waterfront, all along the Somerset side of the Taunton River. And if you parked there, you got towed. So not only did you have a $90 or $100 tow, you had a $35 storage charge plus a ticket. And that's what it cost you to go to watch the power boat, boat races from the Somerset side. Because Fall River, or Michael Lund, failed to adequately work with a neighboring city. That's, that's shameful. And you may want to say, hey, you know what, you're being negative again. This was a great event. It was a great time. Yes, it was a great event. And it could have been better. But the people of Fall River, not a majority, but a good number of people of Fall River said very clearly, I'm so dissatisfied. I'm so unhappy with this whole celebration because they forgot what it's about. And they did. This was about children who took pennies, nickels, dimes out of their pocket to bring the USS Massachusetts to Fall River, to its home. It was about the veterans, the people who served on board the USS Massachusetts, which, mind you, never lost life during its battles during World War II, who worked to bring the USS Massachusetts to Fall River and worked diligently over the years to keep her up and running and keep her open to the public so they knew what this World War II vessel did for our country and for our community. A very good friend of mine, Harold Nye, served on board the USS Massachusetts. And Harold's last act prior to him passing on was escorting the USS Massachusetts to the Quincy shipyard to be refit and repaired. And he rode the decks for a final time on board the USS Massachusetts from Fall River to the Quincy shipyard. That met more to him than anything else in the world. That's what remembrance about this event is about. But we don't have that. No, because this was a political nightmare and a political power play that went on over and over. Even the parade, while everyone says it was a wonderful parade and it was great, it was all politics. They had a bunch of military equipment which were in the parade. It was about 40 minutes long and people were upset because it didn't build up the veterans. It didn't build up the USS Massachusetts. It built up the political forces in the city. It made them look good. All throughout this event, 
through this entire week, all you saw was selfies and pictures of every single elected politician in Fall River saying, look at me, I look wonderful, and this is what I'm doing. That's not what it's about. This event was about remembering those people who served on board the USS Massachusetts and those children, those people of Fall River, those citizens who reached into their pockets and maybe took out the last dime, penny, nickel they had to bring her home. That's what this event was about. And the logistical nightmare of people being stranded without rides and you know, other problems, that was, just, that was just icing on the cake. If you're gonna plan an event, plan it right. Make sure everything is in place. We received information from people who, who actually watch our show on YouTube, watch our show um, on Facebook, and they said, you know, I was going down to Fall River, I was gonna watch the parade, I was going to Fall River, I was, I was gonna go to an event down at the battleship, but I couldn't get there because of the detours and the traffic patterns. It was an absolute nightmare. You created this. You, City Council. You, Mr. Mayor. And you, Traffic Commission. You've created hell on wheels in downtown Fall River. You have created an absolute mess so you can give your friends and local businesses who are nonprofit and don't pay any taxes anyhow, special treatment and special privileges so they can have it a little better for them. How about a little better for everyone else? We need to stop catering to that. But enough about a nightmare known as the 50th anniversary of Battleship Massachusetts. Amazon is coming to Fall River, supposedly. And the New York Times wrote a lovely article Beautiful article. Inside Amazon, wrestling big ideas in a bruising workplace. This was written by Jody Cantor and David Streitfield. A Pulitzer Prize winning reporter, by the way. So I guess he has some credibility. And they talk about the fact that, to quote them, the Amazonians, and which is also a title used for Amazon employees by Jeff Bezos, president, CEO, and creator of Amazon, that they leave their desks or sit at their desks crying because of the unbelievable working conditions that they face. They went so far as a woman who was undergoing treatment for breast cancer that they wrote her up and basically forced her to sign a performance improvement agreement while she's undergoing her chemotherapy or her treatment for breast cancer. This is what Amazon is. They actually refer to their employees as Amabots because they have to be robotic. And Jeff Bezos said he created the management program that they use. They don't look at people, they look at numbers. I highly suggest you read this article. It appeared over the weekend um, in the New York Times. I have a copy of it. And I've actually, over the weekend, was in contact with the writers of this article. Because months ago, I had sent the, the New York Times information on what Amazon and Kenny Fiola and the Fall River Office of Economic Destruction are doing in Fall River by robbing the taxpayers of Fall River, the taxpayers of the Commonwealth, the biopark. $35 million investment in Fall River by the Commonwealth for a life sciences park. And Kenny Fiola, previous Mayor Will Flanagan, current Mayor C. Samuel Sutter, and the entire city council, all nine, have said, we need it because of jobs. Because they guarantee us 500 jobs. Well, my information shows that those 500 jobs will be temporary. They will not be permanent jobs. They will, they will be, in more likelihood, they will be seasonal. This warehouse is going to be a robotic warehouse. 
Amazon bought a robotics company here in Massachusetts to convert all their warehouses to robotic warehouses so that the number of personnel are diminished. They won't need as many. They'll need them seasonally, but other than that, they won't need them that often. The employees that will be full-time employees at this warehouse will be current Amazon management team members who will be imported from other parts or other warehouses or may even be hired locally from current assistant management positions in other Amazon warehouses in the Commonwealth. And why did they choose Fall River? Because we're poor and we're destitute. And we'll take anything that comes along on the hope and prayer of a job. But guess what? The Fall River Office of Economic Destruction has proven over and over again that no matter how many jobs they promise, we never seem to get them. As a matter of fact, a joke was presented to me this morning after one of our viewers read this article and said, you know, Kenny's going to go out there and he's going to say JJ's Hot Dogs is going to expand. They're going to produce 750 new hot dogs a week. You know, I thought that was funny because you know what? That's true. They'll produce 750 new hot dogs. Real hard to do. Okay? And then when that's not produced, who cares? Kenny's still making a six-figure salary, plus. And there isn't a mayor or an elected official who thinks he shouldn't be replaced. After 25, 30 years of service to this city, through a private, nonprofit, contracted organization, they believe that he's God's gift to humanity. Why? Because his wife was a governor's counselor and now she's a state representative? And any inquiries made into the life sciences part were redirected by every state agency to Carol Fiola? Isn't that a conflict of interest? Well, according to the State Office of Ethics, the Ethics Commission, they don't think so. It's really nice how nothing is an ethical violation in the Commonwealth for elected officials. But if you are required as an employee to stick to the ethical rules, they'll fire you for not doing it. This is what Fall River has become. Fall River has become a huge, huge mess. And it's the fault of the people because they want to keep electing idiots. It's the fault of the people because they don't do their research. It's the fault of the people because you can be bought with a hot dog, a hamburger, or a chow mein sandwich. And that's not good politics. That's not good government. That's not good leadership. You know, the mayor in all his speeches talks about a book which I actually went out and obtained because I had to see what this is about, about changing government. And you know what? The book's a very good book. But I don't see the mayor using it. As a matter of fact, the mayor wants to put on an audit committee because we've been asking for a forensic audit for how long? And that audit committee is going to consist of two members of the city uh, council appointed by the city council president who shall serve at his will and pleasure two members of the school committee who shall be appointed by the school committee who shall serve as the chairman's will and pleasure, which is the mayor, the mayor, and one other community person chosen by the mayor. So in other words, we're going to have the people auditing what the city does financially who are the same people who are spending the money. What kind of audit is that? That is not an audit. That does not contribute to transparency. That is a lie. That is a lie. The propaganda that this city is spewing is vile, is disgusting, and the, I don't know what I hate more. The people who are spewing the propaganda or the people who are believing it. You know what? I know you don't like me. I don't care. That's a great thing for me. Because that means I'm making you think. That means I'm making you react. You know, somebody had told me last week that you're like John Adams. 
you are obnoxious, you are direct, and you say what needs to be said. John Adams was one of our founding fathers, and he was not liked at all by the Continental Congress. He was not liked by many of the founding fathers. They found him as cantankerous as they could come. But he was always right. He represented the people. And he told it like it was. People didn't like it. But look what he created. He created America. It is that type of revolution that Fall River needs to stop. You look at the city council agenda for this week. We're going to bond $900,000 for brown yard waste bins. We're going to bond $508,000 for a new MIS system for City Hall. And it's antiquated already. They want to put Windows 7 in on these computers. Guess what? Windows 7 is gone. Don't get me wrong. You can still buy it. It's still out there. And it still has some lifespan for support left to it. But we're already in Windows 10. A lot of people don't like Windows 10. A lot of people like Windows 10. But you know what? That's the way it is. And from a security standpoint, the city would have gone better to use an operating system like Linux. Open source, so there's no licensing fees. Very secure. No hacking. No viruses. And much more efficient to use. But let's stick with the Windows. Why are we going to go with Windows 7? Why? Because some political hack who is getting this contract non-bid because they say, oh, well, he's a community partner. Community partner, my ass. This is a political payback to someone. Because, again, Fall River wants the best, so we're going to buy the oldest. And your city council is going to do it. And I'll guarantee you all nine of them go, yay, yay, yay. Because it's not their money. They don't care. Is this really what we want in Fall River? Just be able to spend the money like there's no tomorrow? How about the fact that the bills for the sanitation fee didn't go out? Because Judge Macy, now corporate counsel, says, why are we doing this piecemeal? We don't even have an ordinance to enforce the bag fee. Yeah, no enforcement of the bag fee. Guess what? You don't have to pay the bag fee. But you're doing it because the city council says, oh, well, if you're going to do this because you want to support Fall River. Hey, Linda, how about you? I understand you're privatizing your trash. That means you don't got to pay the sanitation fee. That also means you don't have to buy the bags for your properties. Do I blame you? No, I did the same thing. But don't go around telling people, oh, no, you buy the bags. You pay the fee to support the city when you won't do it. The rule of do as I say, not as I do, doesn't apply here. And it especially doesn't apply here when you are an elected official. This is what Fall River has become. A city full of lemmings, where you all march to the same drum. And as you reach the cliff, you go right over. As I drive through the city and I see the Kool-Aid man coming through everything going, yay! Everyone's going, give me a glass! because you drink the Kool-Aid. And we need more than Kool-Aid. We need more than empty promises. We need more than a promise of jobs or expansion. And we need more than political hacks. We need people to come out and vote. 100%. 45,000, 46,000 people whatever the case may be, but we need that. And if we don't get it, it's our fault, nobody else's. But guess what? Who cares? Who cares? Nobody else does. So remember that when you're looking at what's happening in Fall River, and remember that when you hear that Fall River is going into the toilet, or worse, into bankruptcy. Hey, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and watch us again on our next show.